Okay, hello everybody. So I think I'm finally ready to use glue here on the first side of uh, gluing this Wiscom forearm back together. And I spent a lot of time, a bunch of experiments, trying to figure out a way to brace it up, clamp it together, um, support it with uh, aluminum and wood and one idea after another and uh, this is what I've come up with. I've got the buttstock placed in a position that uh, seems to have worked out and I clamped uh, this piece of 2 by to the shelf yep, you can see that um, to support it where it likes it and then I clamped another piece of scrap wood on top of that board to support the forearm and when I put it together it's, it fits so cross our fingers it's going to fit once there's glue in there uh, without too much fiddling or adjusting uh, the epoxy gives us plenty of working time. I mean, really, I bet we'd be fine even with a half hour of futzing with it. Although it's a nice warm day and I'm hoping it kicks pretty quick. Uh, I've got a meeting in two hours, um, so, you know, hopefully it's pretty well kicked by then and I don't have to worry about it. I'm sure it will be. Um, so, uh, let's see, the, the steel rods that you previously saw me prepare um, I cut them off of a piece of, uh, of, of an extended drill bit to get the drill rod material and I, cl and I cleaned it up on the angle with an angle grinder and then I held it uh, against the blade of the angle grinder uh, while it was spinning and, uh, and just twisted it to create some little grooves so that there'd be a good glue lock and, uh, and the cleaning up of the surface metal is to roughen it and uh, remove the finish that was on it and then I washed it in acetone which was probably not necessary but I just wanted to make absolutely sure there's no remaining uh, oils on the metal. <clears throat> so now we're going to mix up some uh, epoxy laminating resin. I use the uh, Tap Plastics uh, 314 resin and we're going to use the Fast Hardener which is their number 102. Um, uh, the fast hardener uh, cures harder than the medium hardener um, without the application of heat. You can make the medium hardener uh, cure as hard as this, but you need to put it in an oven in order to get that uh, secondary cure. And, and frankly, even the, in the fast, uh, benefits from heat, and we will be doing that, but just the sun is going to be fine. Once, once it's cured and it's strong, um, and pro I'll probably wait until both sides are done. Uh, then we'll spit, we'll give it some time in the sun to uh, make sure it's really hard. Uh, so to mix the resin, I'm going to tear the cup. I'm going to uh, add some resin. It's on the shelf out of your view. And then I'm going to take the resulting weight. I'm going to multiply it by 1.25. And then we're going to add hardener, and hardener until the weight reaches what the calculator says it needs to be. Basically, it's a 4 to 1 ratio by weight and that's an easy way to do it. Then I'm going to mix it and I'm going to pour some of it off in a second cup to use uh, to impregnate the exposed wood grain and uh, then the other cup with most of the glue in it I'm going to mix um, Cavasil to thicken it, uh, milled glass fibers to give it strength and um, it's probably not necessary to use the walnut dust for color I'm probably going to add some of that to the um, to the epoxy that I'm going to use on the exposed wood. Um, it's just going to kind of play it by ear, but I'm probably going to do that. And I'm probably going to mix the brown in with this. Just I don't know why it, it won't ever be visible, but I'm just going to do it anyway because I'm working with wood. I want my resin to look wood-like, I guess. Uh, and if there, well, I. Actually, I do know why I want it to be brown because there's a little spot here I have to fill after the forearms on there. So yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. It is it is necessary. Okay, so here we go. Sorry I talk too much. It's easier to do than to talk about it. Okay, so cup on there. Turn the scale on. That tears it. Well, it's a warm day. The resin pumps easy. And I think that's going to be plenty. Alright, so we've got 7.9 grams. 7.9 times 1.25 equals 
and I watch the uh, calculator, these cheap calculators, sometimes they don't read your button push. <laughs> I want to make sure that you're getting the math right. Uh, 9.875. Um, there we go. What you could do before doing this, add a little bit of a snack, add some yogurt and granola, pounded a bunch of water. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, my head is alert, my hands are smooth and steady. When I was an aircraft mechanic in the Air Force, uh, there was a pilot that I worked on his airplane, and B-52 pilot, and he always had his crew drink some water before they launched because he said that shortly after drinking water the mind is at its most alert so I've always done that I don't know if it's true or not never looked it up I bet Google would tell you it was a wives tale and the guy was making it up I don't know maybe there's something to it but I do it before I do anything important drink a little bit of water eat a little something Hmm, got something in our mix here. So a little something. Okay, so we got our thin stuff down there in another cup, and we're mixing this up. And I'm looking for peanut butter. Get some of that walnut dust in there. Now I created the walnut dust by rubbing a scrap piece of walnut on the end roller of the, the far end roller on the belt sander and held the cup right underneath it to collect it. Alright, I kind of went past peanut butter. I'm going to add a little bit of this to it. And the cup actually absorbed <laughs> my little bit of thin resin. So I may mix up another little batch of thin resin. Not a problem. Didn't really put quite enough in there. Oh, that's a nice consistency there. Yep. There we go. Looks good. I want it a little bit darker. Mm. That's close. I might add a little more before I do that little uh, touch spot. I got to do a little touch up spot. All right, so now I'm going to try to stuff the hole. Good luck with that, huh? By the time I'm through, I may not have any room to, you know, might not need any thin. This wood might get totally wet with resin just from trying to fill the holes. Good. Oh yeah. I think that hole is pretty well filled. When I when I push this in, I'm getting a huge amount out of the hole. I think it's pretty well filled. I'm just twisting it, going up and down. Feels good. It 
it's uh, it's probably not hard to get the material in there, but boy, if it had an exit hole, it'd be easy, right? So it just traps air, and I just want to make sure there. See that little bloop of air? Just want to try to make sure that I got as much resin in there as I can. But when I put this the rod in there, you can really see how much resin comes squishing up out of there. So I think we got a pretty good fill there. Yep. Seems pretty good. And, in fact, you know, I always just let the material tell me what I should be doing. But, um, by the time we're done, there's very little uncovered wood that hasn't been soaked in this resin. But I'm going to go ahead and do the thin anyway. Okay. Now, hmm. I'm going to turn you off. I got to do a couple other things. I got to get a paper towel. I got plenty of working time, uh, so I'll be right back. Okay, got my little piece of paper towel, and looks like I got enough of the uh, the unthickened resin here. I don't need much. Yeah, that looks really nice. Yeah, I had plenty. Plenty for such a tiny little bit of wood here. Well, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm just using an acid brush and uh, and painting some of this uh, unthickened resin into the wood here just to let it get soaked into that grain. I'm not going to worry about excess glue squishing out. It's all going to be sanded off. Yep, yeah, that's that's good and wet. This is good and wet. Get some more resin on the top of these pins. Not some more. Put some resin on the top of these pins. Yep, that looks good and wet. Nice, I like the consistency I ended up with. Looks really good. Alright. Well. Yeah, that looks like a right proper mess. Yeah, there it focused. Can I, whoops, whoa. Microscopic view. Let me just pull it back out again. And, alright. Good or bad, it's going together and it'll never come apart again. Alright, i got to try to find my holes. They're invisible. Okay. I used an Allen wrench to uh, help poke the glue into the forearm. Let me just uh, find my holes here. Oh yeah, there's one. There's the other one. Alrighty. I just made a little dent in it so I could see them. Alright. 
Oh, look at that. Wow. That oh, looks like a right proper mess, huh? Yeah, when we're done, I'll probably have to put it on the milling machine to clean up the uh, inletting. In the composites industry, thickened resin is called splue. S P L U E. Some people mispronounce it and call it splue. Not splue. Sometimes my projects go splue. No, I'm just kidding. My projects always come out perfect. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, well, doesn't look like I had to add anything into that area that needed, that had a little missing chip of wood. Kind of just all splued out. <laughs> just kidding. Made that up. Squished out. Okay, I need another paper towel. Picked up a new gun today after waiting my California mandated 10 days. Sig Sauer P238. I'm super excited. It is on my hip as we speak. They're really hard to find today. I spent the part, better part of a day a couple weeks ago calling crazy number of gun shops. And I found one. Okay, I'm just going to keep an eye on this and kind of keep playing with it because it gets stickier. I'll be able to uh, adjust the fit because like if I hold it right there it's perfect. If I let go it moves just a tiny bit but as the glue starts to stiffen up it'll it'll start sticking. Well I lost my little extra bit there in that missing piece right there. And if I have to touch that up later, it's no big deal. Not worried about that. Yeah, I might just stand here and hold this for an hour. Put some on YouTube. Oh yeah, if I hold this nice and tight, it's like perfect. I just couldn't find any way to clamp it. So I think I'm going to have to use the clamps God gave me. My ten digits. Yeah, it's looking really nice. Yipper. I don't think it's going to exactly be invisible. But we're doing the best we can with it. And I think by the time I get it sanded, I might do another little fill across there. Just rub some thin resin into it. And uh, we'll see. Sand it smooth. It'll pass the three foot away test. Probably won't pass the bright light scrutinizing, but we'll see. It really is fitting together very nicely. 
Oh, it's starting to get a little sticky already. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of tool and finger cleanup, and I'll check back with you when it's interesting. Okay, so I'm back real quick just for an update. I've been uh, with this for about an hour, um, squishing it, holding it, keeping an eye on it, and it is pretty well uh, stuck now. And I'm pretty happy with it. I don't think I could have done any better. If I look at it at a certain angle, it's like, oh my god, it's like majorly obvious. But if I just change my head position a little bit, it completely disappears. So I think uh, once I sand it, because <clears throat> it's, you know, it's barely detectable. It might be a thou or two that it didn't come out quite flush. But when I sand it, it will be flush, and then that it'll clean up even more, you know, visually it'll... Yeah, see, if I put my head all the way down low, I'm sorry, I'm probably in your way, but uh, if I put my head way down low, I can't see it, and up here, I can't see it. There's just one angle here where that little bit of uh, overlap, you know, once that sands away, I, I think it's going to be great, but whether it is or not, can't do anything more about it now, because it is pretty well kicked, it is not moving, it is not adjustable, and uh, it looks really good. So uh, that will cure overnight, we'll do the other side tomorrow, let that cure overnight, see if the action fits in it. The action is so heavy, there was no way to try to do this with the action attached to the forearm, which I did consider, but that was just a non-starter. So uh, if we got to adjust these holes, so be it. We can do that. But uh, that's my update, so I'll check uh, back in with you all tomorrow.